Olá, pessoal. Eu sou o Ronaldo Lemos, sou advogado, especialista em tecnologia. E hoje eu vou conversar com Bruce Schneier. O Bruce é um dos maiores especialistas em cibersegurança do mundo. Essa conversa ela vai acontecer a convite da Embratel e em março de 2023 o Bruce vem ao Brasil e a gente vai poder conversar com ele fisicamente em São Paulo. Vamos lá, vamos ver o que ele tem a dizer sobre esse tema tão importante. Bruce, can you tell us a little bit about your perspective on cybersecurity? How has this become such a crucial topic for companies and what should we expect from that? Now, it's become a crucial topic because cyberspace is a crucial topic because the internet is everything. It's part of business, it's part of government, it's part of our lives. And as the internet has become more important, the security of the internet has become more important. So it's not really about security, it's about the use of the technology and how important it is. And Bruce, what, what are the threats that you see are on the rise right now? I mean, the threats are what they have been. There are the criminal threats and the nation state threats. Criminal threats, mostly ransomware, some data theft. Nation states, there's a lot of spying, espionage. There is uh, nations attacking each other. And then companies and individuals are kind of in the blast radius. We get affected when Russia or China attacks the United States, for example. And then the criminal threat is bigger. Ransomware is an incredibly growth industry. And it is getting worse because it's profitable. How profitable is it? Is there a big incentive for attackers to actually invest and get more prepared and sophisticated in what they do against companies? They realized a few years ago that the person to whom your data is most valuable to is you. So rather than stealing it and trying to sell it, which is hard, they lock it up and then charge you to get it back. And that turns out to be a very profitable business model. So yes, it's on the rise, it's sophisticated, ransomware gangs, mostly in Eastern Europe, are investing in infrastructure, in capabilities, in support, making it easier for customers to pay. Bruce, do, do you think we should be exploring things like a, a zero trust architecture? Is that a, a possibility to prevent these types of attacks, including ransomware? Yeah, zero trust is an odd name because it's not zero trust. What it really means is continuous authentication. So instead of you logging into a network and now you have all access, you can do whatever you want, that we're gonna authenticate you periodically as you go from application to application. Or maybe if you do something that's weird, we'll pop up a new authentication. And the idea is that by doing that, we kind of make it harder for someone who impersonates you to move around the network. One thing that I think is important about cybersecurity as a whole is actually that we're not talking only about machines, right? We are also talking about people. And people can be a way of exploiting systems as well. So how important do you think is also to change the culture of organizations and actually to educate people about the threats inside of companies and elsewhere? I think one of the things we tend to do in the technical world is blame users for technical mistakes. And education often is our way to cover up bad system design. So whether it's teaching people not to plug in USB sticks or not to click on URLs, I'd much rather we work on good design so we don't have to educate the user. Security has to work with how users normally work. It, it, it's not gonna work if we have to change user behavior. And I'd much rather us design computers so USB sticks can't be harmful and URLs can't be harmful. It's a better way of doing security. So it's important to work with uh, partners that you can rely upon and maybe also think about uh, layers of security that reduce the risks also from the side of people, right? Yes, we need to work with trustworthy people, trustworthy organizations, trustworthy products and services, and also make sure security doesn't have these single points of failure. So layered security, you know, like when you go into an airport, it's not just one security, there's lots of things going on. And all of that works to generate a more secure environment. Internet's no different. 
And in Brazil, we are seeing the arrival of 5G. Is there a, a reason for concern from the cybersecurity perspective? Should we think about it as in terms of like new threats? What are the lessons that you are aware of about this, Bruce? The whole point of 5G is really Internet of Things. Stuff talking to other stuff behind our backs. And that's going to require new authentication techniques. The 5G network itself is going to have new vulnerabilities because of its complexity and the way it works. We're worried right now in the United States about Chinese networking equipment. So there is a lot of complexity to 5G. It's a lot of promise as well. But you know this, every time there's something new, there are new security risks that we need to figure out. Another point is that companies sometimes, they tend to try and protect themselves with their own resources, right? Is that a, a good idea? Or have we arrived to a moment in which the cyber threats are so sophisticated that you actually need help with someone that thinks about it all the time. Can companies still protect themselves on their own? Well, it really depends. There is a trend towards outsourcing, and that's good. Right? We outsource our networks, network management, a lot of our infrastructure. We're using lots of external services. That makes real sense. And security is the same way, with the exception of major banks or large multinationals. I think everyone's going to end up outsourcing security. It's hard to have the expertise in-house, and it doesn't make sense, it's too expensive. So outsourcing is going to be our future, just like it is in every other aspect of IT. And from the country perspective, what do you think can be done? So for instance, Brazil ranks quite poorly in all the cybersecurity indexes. One that I last checked, we were 68th position, which is pretty low. What can the country do uh, to improve its status in terms of cyber security preparedness? I mean, the reason why a country, an organization, a company is not going to have good security is their underspending. So if we want companies to do better, whether it's in Brazil, the United States, we need actual regulations that force a minimum level of security, maybe liabilities, you know, some way to raise the cost of insecurity. Now, none of us like this because all that expenses get passed on to us in terms of higher prices. But that's going to be the only way to improve security. There's no way to do it for free or for cheap. You have to think it's a good idea and force companies to do it. And what is your understand of the future of cybersecurity in terms of attack and defense? I always think about that game walk a mold in which you prepare something to defend yourself and then the attackers get smarter. So it's a cat and mouse game, isn't it? The complexity of the internet means that attack is easier than defense. And that's not going to change. That's been true for many years and it will be true for many years. And we as the defenders are always playing catch up and we're always being reactive. You know, attacks are getting more sophisticated criminals, governments, hackers, and defense needs to get better. And yes, we're going to play catch up, but we need to do a faster job. I hope we need, can get more agile and do it quicker. So I would say that there is no option. You should definitely think about getting yourself ready because attacks might be inevitable, right? You know, but there is an option. The option is not to care. I mean, the option is to notice that the cost of an attack is less than the cost of defense. And a lot of companies do that. You know, the individuals say, you know, if there's an attack, it's not going to be my fault. So I'm okay. I think it's a bad decision for society overall, but we really need to look at the systemic problems. The market doesn't incent good security right now. And we want it to incent better security. And to me, government has to step in right here. If you have any advice to give Brazilian companies and organizations from your perspective, what that would be? I think companies are doing the best they can. They're responding to incentives the best they can. If I then tell them to spend more money on security and they're a less profitable company because of it, that's lousy advice. My advice is really to policymakers to change the incentive structure. Bruce, thank you so much for sharing your ideas with us. 
and I look forward to seeing you physically in Brazil in March 2023 for Embratel's cybersecurity event. So hope we can connect and continue our conversation there. Thanks for having me, this is fun, and I'm really looking forward to uh, visiting Sao Paulo next year.